Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. I'm Mike Drodis, Bible teacher and preacher, and you've tuned into my YouTube channel, Solving the Prophetic Puzzle. The Bible implies that in the last days, some of the characteristics that will be around right before the Lord returns is that men will heap up unto themselves teachers who will teach them things that their itching ears want to hear. I'm not doing that. I see other YouTube channels, I see other websites, I see books that tickle people's ears. They tell people exactly what they want to hear. People get excited about it when they teach to them about the rapture and it agrees with their doctrine and they give them lots of thumbs up and likes. I'm not doing that. It's not my job to have the most views. It's not my job to have everybody like me. It's not my job to go worldwide on a viral uh, video. It's not my job to argue. It's not my job to convince. It's not my job to rebuke. It's not my job to correct. It's not my job to change your mind. My job is to preach and to teach about the end times as it pertains to the Bible and Bible prophecy. My other job is to declare and decree and bring to the forefront the truth that there is a rapture and that the rapture is coming soon. That's what God's called me to do on this platform. Amen. Now, pertaining to the timing of the rapture and what most people call the seven-year tribulation period, I call it Daniel's 70th week. I don't really like the term the seven-year tribulation period because... Um, I have some issues with that. I call it Daniel's 70th week, but no one knows what Daniel's 70th week is, so I have to say the seven-year tribulation period. But pertaining to the timing of the rapture and the seven-year uh, tribulation period, you can study, you can teach, you can preach a lot on that subject. Forever, in fact. The subject is inexhaustible. Because the more you study, the more that you uncover, and the more you uncover, the more you study, and it just keeps going and going. I've been teaching for the last few weeks about the seals of Revelation. So we'll start in Revelation chapter 4. If you want to follow along, I'll give you a moment to find your place in your Bibles. Revelation chapter 4, and while you're looking for that, I'm going to say a quick prayer. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that you brought us together here on this platform to talk about the Word of God, to declare about the Word of God, and to learn about the Word of God. We ask your blessing upon our time in Jesus' name. Amen. Revelation chapter 4, we read that John was on the island of Patmos and he had a, a vision or he was actually called up to heaven. After these, John chapter 4, 1, after these things I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven and the voice, first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking, saying, come up here and I will show you things which must take place. John was taken up to heaven and he went to the very throne room of God. He saw the throne where God was seated on the throne. He saw the 24 elders. He saw the four beasts. He saw all of this. He was in the throne room of God. And in Revelation chapter 5, John sees that from the right hand of him who is on the scroll, who is on the throne, a scroll that was written on the inside. And on the outside were seven seals, and no one could open this scroll. And they were weeping over it. Then the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, came on the scene and he took the scroll. For he alone was worthy to open the scroll, to break the seals, and to open the scroll. I believe that Jesus was able to take that because that was his scroll. It's his revelation. It's his revelation that's in that scroll. Jesus took the scroll, and then we read in Revelation chapter 6 how he begins to break the seals one at a time. The first seal in Revelation chapter 6, Now I saw the Lamb open one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures say with a, loud vo with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. The first four seals we refer to as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And the first seal is the white horse, the white horse rider. And uh, people have speculated as to what or who this is. I believe that the white horse, the first seal, we experienced this, this seal being opened in February 2020. I remember vividly exactly where I was at. I was leaving Peru, coming back to the United States. I had just finished a mission trip. 
And there in the airport, multitudes of people were wearing white masks, surgical masks all over their face. I asked my friend, what is going on here? He said, it must be that virus that they were talking about. It must be reaching epidemic levels or pandemic levels. I didn't know what to make of it. But then in the following weeks, we began to see that this rider, this rider was given a crown. This rider was given a corona. He was given a crown. Crown is translated corona. He was given a crown. He put it on his head and he rode all throughout the world, conquering nations, destroying people, killing millions of people, shutting down nations. This rider on the white horse has destroyed economies, destroyed businesses, ruined families, separated families, shut down churches, shut down businesses, shut down governments. And it's still riding, and it's still doing these things. This rider on the white horse is dressed in white. It often makes me think of the medical establishment who wear the white coats, or even in some instances where they have the white Tyvek suits as they're sterilizing and sanitizing everything. This rider on the white horse had a bow. The bow was to shoot the arrow. The arrow, they're always wanting to shoot the arrow into you. And this thing is going, it's still riding two years later. There was a time when they said, give it two weeks, we'll flatten the curve. We're not flattening the curve. It's riding, and they're already talking about more, um, more strains of this virus coming upon the world. The white horse has been released in 2020. The second horse is the red horse. And in verse, verse 3, we read, When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come and see another horse red fiery red went out and he was granted on the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth and that people should kill one another this red horse is the rider of war in february of 2022 a nation invaded another nation and now we have the whole world in some sort of world war thinking the, the, these, this nation invaded another nation, and then the United States gets involved behind the scenes. Other nations begin to get involved, and before you know it, there's a spirit of war upon the whole world. They're talking about limited nuclear wars. They're talking about biological wars. They're talking about cyber wars. They're talking about various things that they can do to one another. There's a spirit of war, and it's riding across the land. There are people groups against people groups. There are the haves against the have-nots. There are different religions against one another. There is a spirit of divisiveness in the land, and it's going to continue. It's not going to get better. As you look on the news, day after day, you see um, shootings and mass shootings and killings. This, this spirit of war is rampaging throughout the world. The next horse is the black horse. The black horse is carrying scales in his hands. Scales represents commerce. This black horse has not started to ride yet. He's not ride, riding yet. But I believe if you want to know a certain date, I'll give you a certain date. If you want to know when I think the uh, black horse will begin to ride, it will be September 27th, 2022. This black horse rider will bring hyperinflation, a day's wage for 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 a uh, a loaf of bread. I just read or just saw on, on, on the computer that Russia just bombed another uh, grain port. That wheat is going to be in short supply. There's going to be a wheat shortage. There's going to be all kinds of shortages. Uh, you think inflation is bad now at 8%? It's going to be triple that. We're going to have hyperinflation. It's going to take a day's wage for just a loaf of bread. As this black horse rider rides throughout the world. There will be shortages. There will be scarcities. There will be hyperinflation. Your money will be worthless. The fourth horse, the one that I feel is the worst of all, is the pale green horse or the pale horse. This horse is given power over a fourth of the earth to kill. And death and Hades follow with him. And power is given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beast of the earth. By the beast of the earth, maybe pestilence will come from this fourth horse. That is yet to come, but it's on the horizon. Then you have the fifth seal and the sixth seal. We'll talk about that another time. Yet many people who study last days and subscribe to the teaching that the white horse is the Antichrist. They say the white horse is the Antichrist because he's trying to copy Jesus who comes back on a white horse. 
They contend that, and they believe that they will be raptured before the tribulation period begins, and that the white horse rider isn't here yet, so that they still have time. So when I teach that the seals are being opened right now, it causes a tilt in their doctrine. It knocks over their sacred cow. It upsets people. And they defend what they believe, and they'll attack those who refuse to, to subscribe to that doctrine. They'll say stuff like, Brother Mike, how can you be so wrong? Everyone knows that we go out of here before the tribulation period. At the onset, when the Antichrist comes, the rider on the white horse is the Antichrist, the first seal. We go out of here. Before that, we're the restrainer. We're restraining him. But when the church gets raptured, then it's, uh, he comes on the scene. It's almost like we go up and he comes out. The seals can't be opened. What you're saying, Brother Mike, is preposterous. The seals can't be opened. We still are here. The white horse, the Antichrist, is not on the scene. So what you're saying just doesn't make sense. That's their argument. And when you ask them why they believe that, they simply look at you and say, because it's true. Have you ever heard the story of the, of the lady in the pot roast? There was a lady, and she just got married, and her mother was um, helping her cook her first pot roast. And they took this pot roast, and they cut off both ends, and then they put the pot, in the, uh, uh, pot roast in the oven. The girl asked her mother, why do we cut off the ends of the pot roast? The mother said, I don't know. That's what I always did. And the girl said, yeah, I know. I watched you do that. You always would cut off both ends of the pot roast and then put it in the oven. And the, and the mother said, let me ask my mother. So she asked her mother. She goes, why do you cut off both ends of the pot roast before you put the roast in the oven? And the, and the, the grandmother said, I don't know. Let me ask my mother because she's still alive. So they reached out to the great grandmother and they said, why did you cut off both ends of the pot roast before you put it in the pot and then put it in, in the oven? And the grandmother said, because the pan was too small to fit the piece of meat. I had to cut off the ends. And that's exactly where we have people today. We have, and we have this thought that because it's always been told to me, I'm going to believe it because that's got to be the truth. And that brings questions like this. When I teach against or when I teach something different than the, the white horse rider not being the Antichrist, but being something else. When I teach that it possibly could be something else, then you get questions like this. Isn't the rapture supposed to happen before any of the seals are broken? This was a question that someone uh, posted to, to my YouTube channel. And boy, sh could you have seen the answers. Ridiculous answers. I, I, I could teach months on some of these uh, outlandish answers that people came up with. But I believe the question is sincere. I believe the individual was trying to find the truth out. The question, though, if you look at it, is asked from a position of certainty. How did this happen? How did we get in the body of Christ to a position of certainty that the rapture is supposed to happen before any of the seals are broken? Well, brother so-and-so said so. Who told him? His pastor. Who told his pastor? His denomination. Who told his denomination? The seminary students. Who told the seminary students? They figured it out. What if they are wrong about the first seal and the opening of the seals? What if they are wrong about the first seal being the Antichrist and that the seals have yet to be opened yet, that it's waited for a time period called the seven-year tribulation period? What if they're wrong? What if I'm right? What if the white horse rider is the coronavirus? What if the red horse rider is war? Black horse, uh, hyperinflation. What if I'm right? What if we are seeing these seals being opened right now? This stuff is escalating, folks. We are living in the book of Revelation right now. Many believers have been lulled into a sense, false sense of security. They say the rapture is imminent, yet your actions say otherwise. You say the rapture is imminent, yet your actions say otherwise. We've got time. Things are bad. But the seals haven't been broken yet, and we are still here. I'm trying to sound the alarm that, that right now we need to look around. We need to look around, folks, and be prepared. We're living in the book of Revelation right now. The seals are being opened. We need to be prepared. We need to prepare ourselves physically for what lies ahead, mentally 
for what's going to happen, but especially spiritually. The signs are pointing to the rapture happening any moment now. Please stick with me. If you've gone this far, stick with me. The four horsemen are events. The red is war. Black is hyperinflation. Pale or green is death on a worldwide level. The white horse rider is not a person. The white horse is an event to conquer and conquering the world. The white horse is an event like the other three horses. Well, what about the AC? People get all upset about the AC. What about the Antichrist? We can know exactly when he shows up. All you have to do is read Daniel 9.27. It tells us the catalyst that launches him in, into, the, into the worldwide stage when he makes the covenant with the many. It tells us exactly what happens at the midpoint of his seven-year tenure, and we know what happens at the end to the Antichrist. We don't need to be looking for the Antichrist. You are, you, you, you are assuming People who believe that the, the seven-year tribulation period begins with the first seal. You're assuming that. Why are you assuming that the seven-year tribulation begins when the first seal is open? The seals are on the outside of the scroll. The scroll is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Wouldn't it make sense that the seven seals come before the scroll is read? You have to open the seven seals first before you can get into the scroll. One by one until you get into the scroll. Once you're in the scroll, you have the wrath of God. The wrath of God is the seven trumpets, the seven bowl judgments. We won't be here when the wrath of God is poured out upon the earth. The only people that will be here will be the beast, those who accepted the mark of the beast, and those who are unrepentant. Those will experience the wrath of God. We won't be here. We leave at the sixth seal. What is the sixth seal? Look at Revelation chapter 6, looking at verse 14. Read the whole thing from 12 through 17. But 14, then the sky receded as a scroll and is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave, every free man, hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks, and said to the mountains, the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come. These people that John describes were experiencing the rapture, but they were experiencing from the side where they they were left. They said the stars fell to heaven and, and the sky uh, and the sun became black as sackcloth and, and the moon became as blood and the earthquake. They were experiencing the rapture, but they were the ones who didn't go. Then Paul explains to us the rapture from the point of people who do go. Revel, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we, who are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. That's the rapture, folks. That's what we have to look forward to. Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Hey, thanks for watching. If you haven't liked or subscribed yet, please do. Hey, I've also got a Facebook page. Check it out. It's Mike Drotus dot Solving the Prophetic Puzzle. I'd like for you to look at that. Hit like. Uh, don't forget, you can always post or email me. And I also want to re remind you that I have two end time novels out, The Search for Truth and Waiting for the Rapture. You can get that at the website, waitingfortherapture.com. Thanks for watching. Keep looking up. Jesus Christ is coming soon. God bless you.